So Avengers Infinity War and Endgame co-director Joe Russo put out a TikTok video recently where he appears to be mocking the box office numbers for Martin Scorsese's most recent film, Killers of the Flower Moon. Now, the Marvel fanboys are out in full force because, of course, they are, proclaiming that their hero, Joe Russo, has cooked the cinematic legend. But if you are paying attention, you will see what is really happening here. Joe Russo did nothing but expose his own insecurities about being an inferior filmmaker compared to the legendary Martin Scorsese. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So director Joe Russo released a TikTok video where he's reacting to another video of Martin Scorsese talking about his dog, Oscar. To which Russo responds, his name is Oscar? That's really cute. He then reveals he's holding his own dog and says, come on, box office. Ha ha, very funny, mother this was an obvious poor attempt at humor by Joe Russo. And of course he's referencing that his Avengers films were box office juggernauts. And all the accolades and Oscars that Martin Scorsese has received pale in comparison. Now some are saying this is just a friendly little jab and he meant nothing by it. Others across social media are tearing Joe Russo apart right now due to his perceived lack of respect for the legend of Martin Scorsese and for what is coming off as a somewhat childish response. In the grand scheme of things, like anything else that goes viral on social media, a lot of this is probably being blown way out of proportion, but that doesn't mean that we can't learn something from this situation. Even if this is a quote unquote joke, you can find a lot of truth in a joke if you know where to look. That makes sense. If you want my honest opinion, when I initially saw it, it made Joe Russo look very bitter to me and kind of insecure in regards to the films that he's been attached to. Yes, of course, he directed Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, and no one can take that away from him. But does anyone really think of those movies or praise them as Joe Russo-led projects? People like those movies because they were a culmination of 10 plus years of world building. Those movies are being propped up by the Marvel brand and what came before. Let's ask a serious question. What has Joe Russo done since those projects that has been the least bit memorable? Nothing. It seems like once the Marvel Studios banner is removed from the top of your film, no one really cares about your work. Of course the Avengers movies made a ton of money at the box office. But here's the truth. That was going to happen whether Joe Russo directed them or not. And if I'm going to be even more honest here, I would say that his two Avengers films, and more specifically I'm talking about Endgame, is easily one of the most overhyped and overrated movies of all time. Who's this man? No! Endgame got the status of an all-time classic from some because of what it represents. But the actual material contained within the film from a pure filmmaking perspective left something to be desired. And Joe Russo knows that deep down, and that's why he's getting a bit defensive about Martin Scorsese's critiques of the comic book movie genre. Because again, he might not admit it, but he knows there are some truths in what Martin Scorsese is saying. He's out of line, but he's right. So the only way that he could think of responding to that is how all the fanboys respond, and that's talking about box office. Box office has never and will never be a good barometer for judging the quality of a film. People need to realize that the interest in a film and the quality of the film are two very different things. And Joe Russo inherited a situation where he was making films with built-in interest. No matter what Joe Russo produced, those movies were going to succeed. So for him to take credit for that in the way that he is, is kind of lame to me. And I also want to point out, because I know some people are going to respond to this video and say, well, if Martin Scorsese can give his opinion, then so can Joe Russo. And that's absolutely right. Joe Russo can share his opinions as much as he wants. The difference is his opinions, or this opinion specifically, feels very personal. And for the most part, it seems like people aren't being very receptive of that. You didn't see Martin Scorsese calling out specific directors who work for Marvel. He simply gave his valid opinion of the genre as a whole, based on what he's seen. And some of the individuals who work in that genre are taking offense to that. Mostly because they don't understand what Martin Scorsese's actual gripe is. He's never once said that these movies shouldn't exist. 
Again, he's simply asking for variety so audiences don't get programmed, like they already are, to only be receptive to that kind of film. It's a valid concern as it pertains to prolonging the art form of cinema. So you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. But I wouldn't expect someone like Joe Russo to understand that because he's the type of person who supports AI-generated films. People will always tell you exactly who they are without you having to guess. All you have to do is listen. Now, much to my surprise, most of the internet seems to be roasting Joe Russo, which restores a little bit of faith in humanity for me. So let's look at some of these reactions so we can get a clearer vision of what the film community really thinks of Joe Russo. First, we have Adam Pierron who says, Scorsese used his clout to cash his biggest check and make a Jeremiad work on America's founding sin and the bottomless pit of human sin. Joe Russo used his success to frame a shot from inside of Tom Holland's anus. It's Hollywood, baby. Who knows what's going to happen? When it comes right down to it, the box office numbers for Killers of the Flower Moon don't really matter. It's a rare instance where box office doesn't matter, but I have a good reason for saying that. For one, Scorsese has already cashed in on this film because of his streaming deal with Apple. The fact that it was released in theaters was just an extra added bonus. And again, the more people who see this film on streaming or however they might see it, and the more time that passes and the more conversation that's had about the film, a greater appreciation for the film will be had. It happens all the time where great films weren't appreciated when they first came out but gain a lot more recognition as time goes on. Also, the part about Tom Holland's anus pretty much sums up the major difference between a Martin Scorsese film and a Joe Russo film. Next, we have Sean Burns, who said, I guess The Gray Man is no longer the most embarrassing thing directed by Joe Russo. For those that don't know, The Gray Man was a Netflix original film directed by Joe Russo that absolutely nobody cared about and holds zero cultural significance. Then we have Eli Olsberg who says, Man, the fact that Scorsese's still trying to make it count cinematically, instead of taking victory laps or simply enjoying retirement, leaves me incredibly moved. Meanwhile, Joe Russo is like, AI rocks, let's put digital Marilyn Monroe in movies. Well, the truth in that tweet is certainly going to hurt someone. SOF capital T, soft. T huh? Yes, Martin Scorsese could be resting on everything that he's already accomplished. Yet he continues this late in his career to contribute to the art form of cinema in a meaningful way. And that's because Martin Scorsese actually cares about what he's doing, and he's not just doing it for a paycheck. He makes films and tells stories because he's passionate about them. And above all else, he wants to tell those stories the right way. Does Joe Russo sound like the type of guy who wants to make films the right way? No, it sounds like he wants to take the easy way out which is pretty much what he's been doing for his entire career. Variety printed a story with a quote from Beyond Fest that says, in 50 years, no one will know who Joe Russo is. Now, I don't know if that's true. I don't want to be that hard on the guy. But I will say that when the time comes, at best, he will be remembered as the guy who directed that Avengers movie. Meanwhile, Martin Scorsese will be remembered as a master of his craft, who has countless classics under his belt. Classic films that will be remembered and studied for years to come. Maybe if Joe Russo spent a little less time trolling on the internet, and a little more time perfecting his craft, he might be able to direct something someday that's at least half as good as something that Martin Scorsese has directed. Y'all be cool. Right on.